So sometimes when I'm at conferences and uh, start debating with some of these transparency advocates and anti-tax planning zealots that claim that asset protection and tax planning and all this stuff is evil, or even when I'm talking to, to some people who are against it, their argument is always exactly the same. And their argument always rests on the fact that governments are trustworthy and are not going to engage in any kind of overreach, right? And I think if you have any kind of common sense, you know that governments are absolutely not trustworthy. And it doesn't matter whether or not you actually did something wrong. So their argument always works something like this. If I did nothing wrong, I have nothing to hide. The government isn't going to do anything to me. In theory, that works. In theory, that is correct. But it is false in real life because that's not actually how it works. In real life, innocent people are falsely accused. And innocent people often fall victim of government overreach. And I'm going to give you a prime example. On March 22nd of this year, 2021, a private vault facility in Beverly Hills called U.S. Private Vaults was raided by the FBI, the DEA, and the U.S. Postal Inspection Service. 1,500 private safety deposit boxes were seized and taken to the FBI office in Los Angeles. There is no way that every single one of those private boxes in that facility were related to illegal activity. Impossible. So that means some very innocent people who did nothing wrong had their boxes illegally seized by the government, taken to the FBI, most likely emptied out and inventoried, and now they're going to have to fight to get it back. How hard they're going to have to fight back to get it back, I don't know. My guess is this is a pretty blatant overreach and the government is, will wind up giving it back fairly easily. If, however, still a violation of your privacy. They had no right to do that, right? And the, the, the argument that the government, of course, has is, oh, this, so this U.S. private vaults facility was advertising privacy, and apparently they only required limited identification number, uh, li limited identification information from clients, which, of course, invites government scrutiny, and maybe because of these things, a higher percentage of the safety deposit boxes in this facility were connected to illegal activity than, for example, a safety deposit box facility in a bank. But that certainly doesn't mean that everybody was, that all of them were related to illegal activity. My guess is the government's going to use some sort of bullshit argument that, oh, if you, you know, want some privacy, then you must be a criminal and that's the reasonable cause, which is nonsense, right? I bet you every single bank in America that has a safety deposit box facility has safety deposit boxes with the proceeds of some sort of criminal or illicit activity and you don't see the government going in and taking those right because people would freak the fuck out so now tell me that the government off you know act responsibly and ethically it's nonsense i mean this was no reasonable cause as to some of these boxes for sure. It's an unreasonable search and seizure. It's a violation of due process. I'm sure I could find a bunch of more laws it violates, but that's not the point. And the thing is, this is not an isolated incident, right? They use John Doe summonses on law firms to try to gain identities of clients. I actually uh, knew a guy who had one of my, my clients years ago uh, woke up in the morning and found out that there was no money in his corporate bank account because it was levied by the IRS incorrectly. Whoops! The IRS gave it back to him, but they made no compensation for all of the balance checks, fees, and damages that he incurred uh, for having all of his money seized for absolutely no reason. And you know what the other thing the U.S. government does? Where, now let's remember, we're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty in the United States. I think we all know that's a farce at this point, but that's what they claim, right? The first thing they do, should you get accused of wrongdoing, is freeze all your shit. They freeze your house, they freeze your real estate, they freeze your bank accounts, they do everything, and then they arrest you. 
and they do this intentionally. They know not all of that stuff is the proceeds of crime. Even if you did a crime, they know all that stuff is not the proceeds of crime. And even if they have a very weak case against you, right? It's just an accusation. You didn't do anything wrong. They still do that. And they do it for a very specific reason. One, if you're in jail and you have no assets to post bail and get out, you're more likely to just say, okay, I did it, even if you didn't, so you can get the hell out of jail. But let's say you're willing to stick it out in, in jail and defend yourself the way you really should, or you somehow make bail and you get out. How the hell are you going to afford a decent attorney? You can't, because they seized all your shit, and that's why they do it. They do it to beat you. It is not about justice in America. It is absolutely about winning. Because most of these prosecutors are not lifers. They just want to rack up as many wins as they can so they can flip and go become a criminal defense attorney and make a bunch of real money. The point that I'm trying to get at has nothing to do with justice. It has everything to do about winning. And that's what you have to remember. This is why you have to protect yourself from government overreach because you are guilty until proven innocent and sometimes the government takes your shit when they shouldn't and so you need to protect yourself now i'm not advocating doing anything illegal i'm not advocating hiding anything but i am advocating taking some portion of your assets and protecting them in a structure outside of the united states now that structure is usually going to take the form of some sort of a trust or a foundation you have to of course set it up with with legal proceeds i'm not advocating this for criminals, this is for, for people with legal funds that they want to protect. You set this up in a trust or foundation outside of the United States. The assets have to be outside of the United States. Now, you're not going to get any tax advantages for, for this because U.S. persons setting up foreign asset protection structures, the U.S. has done away with all the tax advantages. It's not like in the movies. So you're not going to get any tax advantages. I'm also not advocating hiding it, right? Because you put an asset protection structure outside of the United States and you put money in it, you're going to have to tell the government about it. Matter of fact, your taxes are going to become more expensive and, co more expensive and complicated. You're not going to pay more tax, but your tax reporting is going to become more complicated uh, and therefore expensive to report all of this foreign stuff you have. But guess what? The government doesn't have the ability to just freeze your account like they do in the United States because most of these because these foreign countries are sovereign countries and the US needs to go get a court order in that country to tie up your assets they don't just have access to their banking system where they can go freeze your shit or they can just the US judge can order that it's frozen and it's frozen it doesn't work like that they have to go comply with another country's legal system and they're not always going to be able to do this with these flimsy accusations that they make or completely baseless ones where they have absolutely no reasonable cause like in this U.S. private vaults case. So by putting your assets overseas in, in some type of an asset protection structure and actually physically moving those assets, whether that's cash or whatever it is outside the United States, you're going to be able to, pro to protect it much better from government overreach. Now, if you're a criminal, and I'm not going to help you if you are, but you know, if you did do some crimes and the, 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 the funds that were in this foreign structure were from criminal proceeds, then probably the U.S. will get their hands on it, right? Because most countries, the U.S. has what's called a mutual legal assistance agreement with them uh, where they cooperate in criminal matters. And if you, know, you did commit a crime, you're not going to be able to protect your assets. But if they're legitimate assets, then certainly having them in a foreign structure is going to offer you a lot of protection. Um, it is going to be a safety net, it's going to be a nest egg, and it's going to be well protected because I think that this U.S. private vault situation is a perfect example of why the government cannot be trusted and should not be trusted because they don't act ethically or responsibly in many cases. And until they do, it's up to you to protect yourself. And if you don't, well, then that's just your fault uh, because innocent people do get screwed uh, all the time. Anyway, that is my public service announcement for today. Uh, as you can see, I get pretty heated on this topic, uh, but it is not without reason. <laughs>